Yes. So I'm going to talk about uh, what it means, what it really means to carry God's presence. Um, I know we have talked about this for a long time in pieces, but I'm going to go deeper. The presence of God simply means the person, um, the presentness of the person. Like I am in the presence of Diana. I am in the presence of Sharanda. I'm in the presence of Camilla. In other ways, it's a tangible ob ob um, obstacle or object that I so present in the room. You, I am in the presence of Deborah because I can see her and if I come closer, I can feel her, right? If I come closer, Sharanda, I can feel her because sometimes she doesn't have to say anything. I can feel our energy or our emotions. Oh, all that it's called the presentness. So sometimes people, they question about the presentness of God. Some churches will tell you that they don't believe in a manifest presence of God. And many times I've, I've been told, John, there was one church that wanted to have me and they said, we don't like people shaking or people crying and we don't like all that, but we just want your story. Um, I would say it's really great that you, you are welcome. I said, it's really great that you want my story, but the story, there's a, there is a person involved in the story. And I want him to be part of the story. Otherwise, I don't want to share my story. My story can produce death. The word without the owner can produce death. The Bible says, law gives death, but the rhema gives life. You know what it means? You can use the same Bible to destroy yourself and you can use the same Bible to, to keep yourself. But when you read the Bible through the presence of the Holy Spirit, it's no longer just something you want to use. It's life to you. It's a reality. So the reason why people do not put value into the word of God, because there is no honor of the word. Now, Jesus said that these words that I speak, they are life. How can the words be life? In other words, the word has an energy behind and that energy that can create life. Do you not believe any negativity that somebody says to you, it doesn't matter if you love the person so much. I don't care what position they are, could be president and whatever. If they say something that is contrary to the will of God, you have to reject it. Because if, not all the negative words will have an impact on you. Only the words that you believe is what have an impact on you. Because the world will say whatever they want to say. In other ways, we may th then people say, that one spoke negative things about me or something. As long as you don't believe it, it cannot have any impact on you. You only give life to the word that you believe. When you believe in a word, you are awaken it. It's the same as when you believe in God's word, it becomes alive and quickened. When you just hear the word of God and you do not believe in it, it has no effect on you. It's like a sower that went to plant a seed. He put some seeds on the top of the stones and he put some seeds on the, on the thorns. It's, it's a soil mixed with the thorns. He, he planted some seeds there. Then he also planted some seeds on a totally fertile ground. There was no thorns and it was well plowed. So the, 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 the ones on the dry stones, the birds came because they can see it, say, thank you God for supplying these nice seeds. The birds ate it. Some of them, the sun killed it because it became hot. So they could not grow roots. 
The other ones, they started to germinate, and as they were germinating, as they were germinating, oh, they, it's really great that they are growing, right? Now the thorns, they begin to chop the leaves, begin to chop it down and cut it down. Now it cannot grow. Then there are other seeds that are, that, that are being put on the, on the fetal. These ones, they begin to grow and grow, no obstacle. They were just growing and growing until they produce fruits. So the word of God is like that. There are some people that the word of God, you just cast like on the stones. They will just hear the word of God and get excited about it. And the second, second, just a minute later or a day later, they don't even know about what I talked about or what God spoke to them about it. They will even doubt the Bible. Then there are these other ones and they receive the word of God, but they mix with the things of the world. They mix with the mixture of man, the fear of man, and the fear of man and the things of the world begins to chalk them. Oh, you don't believe in this word, begins to chalk them and chalk them. The negative things they hear from the people of the world and all this begins to chalk it. Those are thorns begin to chalk it. So you had a, you, you had a seed germinating, but it's being chalked is being chalked by the, the negativity. And then there's this other word, you ignore what the world is saying, you ignore the negativities and you just stand on the word of God and the word of God begins to grow and grow. Now, you have to understand that the word of God is a weapon and the, every time the word of God is preached, it's war. What do you think why the enemy wants ministers to be have a mixture of the word of God so that it can be like a thorny word that it just grows and does not go anywhere? What do you think like people have a hard time to, to receive the true living word of God? Because the enemy does not want them to grow and produce fruits. But when people freely commit, there is something. When they freely commit, there is growth. There is growth in the word of God. Now, this is the word of God will never be effective without the presence of God. So, the word of God is a seed. The water is the presence. Did you hear what I'm saying? Without the seed being wet, being being wetened to become wet it cannot germinate this the word of god without a presence of the honor it cannot have effect a christian life without the presence of god it's like a dry seed that is on the rock that is just being dried that's why you find the children of god that live like a child of the devil don't blame them because the word is just on the dry rocks but you are planted on the fertile ground. These words I speak are gonna grow and bring the seeds. You must understand that uh, prosperity is war. Living a healthy life is, is, war. is, is war. W A R is war. Because the enemy does not want anything that is good, is war. We are in the spiritual warfare, but we cannot overcome it without the presence of the Lord. And the other thing that you have to understand why the enemy wants you to have the word without the presence, because the word have no effect. In the book of Hebrews chapter four, it says, they had the word, but they never mixed it with faith. So the word had no effect on them. So we have many hearers of the word, but there's no effect. We have many people who say, oh, I heard about healing, but I never got healing. I heard of having financial breakthrough, but I never got my financial breakthrough. There's so many people, I received so many messages like, oh, I've been prayed for by the best. I still, I don't have my financial blessing. I've been prayed for by the best. I'm still sick. It's not about being prayed for by the best. How much are you a word practitioner? I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how deep the pain is. If you keep practicing the word of God, you're going to be healed. Even when your time comes to die, you're going to die pain free. Doesn't mean you always need to die in pain. 
God cares about himself that he will not disappoint himself because God is faith and faith comes by healing and healing is word. You have to not be moved but what is going on around you. You have to be moved by God's word. There will always be battles, but the presence of God makes you to fight a battle while you are having joy. You are in the battle, but you have peace. You are in the battle, but you have joy. What type of the person are you? That you are, there is war around you, but there is joy. There is war around you, but there is peace because that's what makes us a different people. You're welcome, Sylvia. You know, the, the scripture says, I give you peace. Um, okay, you know what? We have very, very few people on the Zoom. It's because the link was wrong. Forgive us, people. Um, if you know someone who is on the Zoom who is not there, just send them the link. Do me that favor. Um, that would be, I would really appreciate that favor. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I promise you people we are working on this. I know I've been talking for a long time, but we had a meeting before that today. Um, yeah, so you can tell people that to use the link on the Facebook. Yeah, so it's uh let's go to scriptures a little bit let's go to exodus chapter 33 i know i always talk about this but it's my Thank favorite you. scripture. that's what you're talking about tonight sure. it's my favorite scripture actually exodus um so if you know someone on the Zoom, on the Zoom who is not there, you can just send them the ring. Uh, so I'm, I'm talking about what it means to carry God's presence. So why is Moses who is so important? Moses, he was a prince in Egypt. And those days when you're a prince, you're really a prince. Because those days, kingdoms owned everything before the human rights showed up, before democratic democracy showed up. When this person is a king, he owns everything, including people. And then we, but this time, even if you're a prince or what, you don't own the people, things have really changed a little bit. You still have, you only have the right of ruling, but you don't have the right of controlling the people. People still have a lot of rights. So a lot of things have changed today's democratic, even in England where it's controlled, it, people still have their own rights. They protest. During those time of kingdom, you can't protest against the king. You'll be dead. So Moses had the absolute power as a prince and he was educated in the ways of, of the prince. He knew no poverty, he knew nothing. Yet when he encountered God's presence in the form of fire, his life was never the same again. Now, when we talk about your life will never be the same, a lot of people who do not know the Lord, they get confused. 
You know, when you use this word, you will never be the same. They say, what do you mean? Does it mean my name will be changed? What do you mean? Do you mean I'll be changed to paper now or to pink? What, what do you mean? What, it mean? what it means to never be the same is that your perspective and your thinking is going to be different. And where you are used to lose, you're going to win. And where you're used to be sick, you're going to be healthy. Where you used to be in poverty, now you're going to walk in abundance. Everything, you're going to put on the new light and see things in a different way. Where you were controlled by cocaine and drugs, now it's no longer important. Now you are led by the Spirit of God. Where the flesh was controlling your life, temper was controlling your life, your own personality was controlling your life, your own flesh was controlling your life. You were troublesome in the family, you were troublesome at school, you were troublesome in everything. You don't even know how to handle yourself. Suddenly, you're a man of integrity, means you're a man of your words. What you speak is what you are. You live by integrity. Suddenly, you, you're a man of principles, controlled by the principles. You, you you are controlled by certain values there are certain things you cannot participate because you are governed by the principles of the word of god you have values for your life before you lived without values now you have values these are very important things never sacrifice your values for anything never sacrifice your self-respect for anything if I'm being in, invited somewhere to speak, I sense any kind of disrespect, I'll take my flight or car and drive back because my self-respect is very important. Or if people are coming across my own principles and my values or the word of God, I will not make those type of people to become my friends because I value that. How do I value those principles? Because it's, 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 it's because I'm being influenced by the presence of God and I'm being changed and now I'm being raised by the principles of the word of God. I will not sacrifice my integrity for anything, for a dollar or anything, because I know that the, the, you are as good as your name. You are as important as your name. Values and integrity are very important. When people know you're a man of integrity and you're a man of, him, of value, a woman of value, they will listen to you. They will respect you. They will, people of uh, kings will come to you because they know you're a man of integrity. Kings will come to you because they know you're a man of value. And self-respect, you cannot sacrifice it for anything. Something as a child of God you should do Never disrespect any color or any person despite of their status in life. You should respect even people that are homeless in their own respective way. You should respect the rich their own way. What I mean is respect human being. Never discredit the image of God because you are you are at a at a at a at a place of opportunity at a place of favor at a place of privilege you have your roof on you have food in the fridge and you can sleep do not respect do not disrespect somebody but at the same time in in this in the same that you don't want to disrespect you don't you don't want to disrespect somebody but do not sacrifice your values for the sake of respecting somebody you understand what I'm saying? Your values come first, which is the word of God. Your integrity comes first, which is the word of God. You cannot sacrifice them because you want to respect them. Very important wisdom that I've just gave you. And you are married and you have children and all that. Protect your family. Do not sacrifice your family for anything except for the Lord Jesus Christ, not for the world, not for anything. You have to protect them. These are some of the values that I, that, that I carry. Protect the family. I live by integrity. I live by principles and by self-respect. And if I don't feel respected in any way, I don't have time for any person who I feel disrespected. 
Now, you must understand, let's go back to Exodus. Moses, he was a respected person. He was a man of principles, a man of value. But he was able to sacrifice one value of being a prince. Because being a prince means coming against the will of God. Being a prince means to disobey God. He disregarded that. He sacrificed because there was something more valuable than that. To have the person of the presence of God. That's why in verse 15 said, he said to him, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. He values God's presence so much in Exodus chapter 33, verse 15. He valued so much the presence of God that he did not want. Remember, he's the man of authority. He's the one who made loose. He's the one who commanded the chariot. He's the one who commanded the slaves, Jews. He was the one who commanded everybody. Hey, guys, let's go this side. They all go. Hey, you guys, stop here. We're spending a night here. They're going to spend. You're going to eat here. You're going to eat. You're not going to eat. He was the man of authority because he was the son of the king. Even if he was adopted, that's still his father. He knew no other daddy except the king. And the king loved him as his own son. Adopted children as real as a biological children because they get connected by emotions with their parents. They become inseparable. They are one. That's their daddy. That's his own. That's his daddy. The, the king was his father. Because he knows he's the son of the king, is in the son of authority. Everybody was bowing to him. But yet, despite having all this power and influence, he knew something. He tested something on the burning bush. He tested something greater than being a son of the king. The presence of God, Jehovah God. That presence made his life to never be the same again because something was changed from the inside because something was changed from the inside that's what he desired that's what he pursued with all his mighty with all his mind with everything in him because he wanted a presence and he didn't want to do anything without a presence if you're going into ministry you have not encountered god you just want to build the ministry in a way of entertainment. You can draw the crowd, but you will not have an impact on earth. You understand? But, to, but if you build the ministry saying, if your presence will not build with me, I will not build if your presence will not be with me, I will not preach. If your presence will not be with me, I will not lead your people. I want your presence to come. I want to be led by your spirit. I value your presence more than my physical position on earth of being a pastor or being whatever names we give ourselves doctor plus every whatever extra things that we may have none of these titles are nothing i'm the greatest title i want to have my friends here the presence of the lord i want to be known as a person of the presence that's why this ministry is called his presence fire ministries it's not just a good a good listening name no, it is a cry of my heart that I want to be the carrier of God's presence. It's my prayer that I may carry the presence of God. It's my prayer that you may carry the presence of God. That you may not just be a word only. You may not just be an entertaining preacher or an entertaining singer. But I want you to be the carrier of the presence of the person of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know his fire, his fire and his heart.
Moses knew something more deeper. It's different if you say, oh, he was poor. He needed God to promote him so that God can provide for him. No, he had all the, all the cattle. He had all the food. He had all, the, all, all, that, all that sea belonged to him because it belonged to his father. The land belongs to him. He can walk in any bakery and pick up the bread. No one will be able to question him. He can take over your house. You cannot oppose him because his soldiers will kill you. He just says, I like this house. They take it over. Including their women. If he says, I like this woman, he will take it. If they try to resist it, they are dead. That's how much power he carried. Yet, there was something much more greater than the pressures of this world. There was something more rich than the pressures of this world. The presence of Jehovah God. Let's go in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And I want you to, to develop that heartbeat of God's presence. And the world today, they are looking for actors and actresses that are carriers of God's presence. My dear friend Heidi Bick, actually, she's doing a school for actors and actresses in, our, in our, um, I think it's in October. Let me, let me check again. Um, she asked me that if people want to do a school, she, she would really love some people to join. Uh, She's doing a school in July 23rd, 20, 30, 31st July to August the 28th of acting. The people that are already actors, she wants to inspire them. Of course, there's the acting coach on that. So you are watching if you want to join Heidi Baker for acting for those uh, four weeks school. Please, you can go to Iris Global and register you're going to enjoy that. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to um, Moses again. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I, am I too aggressive? I just become so passionate about the presence. Anything about the presence just makes me Passion, because that's my life. Do you know how I used to tell God? I just want, if I don't preach any message, but I can just feel your presence, I'm fine. If I never give any prophetic word, but I can just feel the presence of God, I'm fine. This is the type of my prayer. That's how much I love the presence of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to read a little bit more. We're going to look at a couple of Man of faith here. Now faith is the substance of things opt for, evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. That's Hebrews chapter 11, and I'll keep reading. Now I'm reading verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which were, which which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, which, by which he obtained witnesses that was righteous and testifying of his gifts, and by it his being dead, yet he still speaks. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. He was not found because God had translated him. Before his translation, he had this testimony that he praised God. He had this, the word he praised God. He walked with God's presence. The word he praised God. He walked with God's presence. When you, when you are the lover of God's presence, you attract the favor of God upon your life that he may even rescue you from dying. 
But without faith, it is impossible to praise him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward, reward of them that diligently seek him. When you seek God's presence, you'll be diligently looking for that person in the presence. There is no diligency for something you're not passionate with. There is no commitment for something you don't love. There is no reason where there is no reason. There is no commitment where there is no commitment. There is no love where there is no love. There is only love where there is love. There is only commitment where there is commitment. There is only a reason where there is a reason to be, to be committed by God. So Moses, before he had no reason, but he encountered God in the mountain. Now he had a reason for his living, the presence. He says, God, I will not go anywhere until I experience what I experienced in the burning bush. If that is not following me, I'm not going anywhere. And he knew that protection was not from man, protection was from God. People, God's presence will protect you. You don't know the enemies that you have. You don't know which the devil has planted in your life. Certain relationships, certain places where the enemy has infiltrated. You don't even know. You are so innocent. You don't even know you have been trapped by the enemy. But the presence of God is able to get you out of that. That's why Moses knew that I need God's presence in my life because the reason for God's presence is for my own favor, my own protection, and my own living. It's not about him being the leader. That mattered less. He was already a leader. The presence of God is not so you can start a church, so you can have a name everywhere. So the, of the carry of God's presence or the greatest prophet, that matters yet. What you need is that I need the presence of God by myself. Moses said, I need God's presence. Remember, he was already a leader. He was a ruler. Prince is a ruler, not just a leader. leader. He was a ruler. Prince is a ruler, not just a leader. leader. He was a ruler. What happened? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't place anything. Hello? Okay, we are there. Okay, somebody might have turned the TV then and this. So sometimes people do that. But, but anyway, they're getting as much excited as I am. That was you so who you did must what? Understand. You must understand that the prince is a ruler not a leader. In other words, he lose over the leaders. A king is not just a leader. He's the king over the leaders. He has eight months, he has other people that are leaders. He's the king, is in charge. The word king means control of everything. Israel means prince, means you are the ruler of the world. Okay. The noise is out. Praise God. I was getting excited. I didn't know I love teaching that much. I go deeper. So, um, without faith, it is impossible to praise him for he that cometh to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligent to seek him. Moses had faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. With Moses, he heard God through visual, visual. He had God what? Visually. He had God what? Visually by seeing the fire. Then afterward he had God.
That's why some people, they are artists. They can, they can hear God through the artistic way, the paintings and different things. Moses did not hear in a voice at first. He just saw the fire and all that. That's how he heard God. It interpreted to him. And then he heard the voice at the end, remove the sandals, what you're standing is a holy place. Then he knew by picture, God spoke to him. And by voice, God spoke to him. So God can speak to you by picture and by voice. Does it make sense to someone? Now, verse 7, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. I said we're going to be a wow in this one because all these people, they, they loved God's presence. They pursued God's presence. By faith, Noah being owned, by faith, Noah being owned, warned, sorry, not owned, but being warned, so by faith, um, Noah being warned, he was warned of God, things not to seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heir of their righteousness, which is by faith. Now verse eight. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into the place which he should, he should after he received for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out not knowing where he went. Look at this, Abraham was a very successful man, but none of that, none of that was an hindrance to the move of God. Some of you, when you have your first million or you have your first 10,000 or 100,000, you even stop to worship God, which means you're not passionate yet about God's presence. Moses said in Exodus chapter 33, verse 15, I'm not going anywhere if God's presence is not with me. Our living as children of God should be the pursuit of God's presence and his nature. We must pursue his nature. We must pursue his presence, but we can't pursue what we have not experienced. We cannot pursue what we have not seen. That's why the Holy Spirit comes and touches us and gives us a, a revelation of God's description of who he is in us. Once we have that inner description, inner knowing who God is, Nothing can stop you. No wealth, no world can stop you. But if you don't have that experience inside you, it's so difficult to pursue God. Some people, when we say pursue God, they even say, what do you mean pursuing God? It's true. If you don't have an experience, what does it mean to pursue God? You must have what you call an experience with God. Moses was a prince he had everything, yet it says, I'm not going anywhere or do anything without your presence. This is a ruler who understands power. Once you test of God's presence, your life will never be the same. What I mean is that the word you'll never be the same can be confusing to other people. It simply means, the perspective of the way you look at things will change. What you valued, you may not value anymore. Your values may change. And when your values changes, your desire changes. Remember, I talked about three important values. I talked about self-respect. I talked about God's principles. I talked about following, valuing family that you cannot trade these things for anything in the world, but you never really find the value, not until you know how to carry God's presence and how to walk with God's presence. Some people choose to have the word without the honor. And that's why there's, there is arguing of philosophies. Even in the book, in the Bible it says, Apostle Paul says, it will profit you nothing by arguing of your philosophy. 
There were a lot of people in the Bible who were arguing who we will ascend and descend and all this. Even today, we still have those questions about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But when you encounter him and experience him, all those questions are answered. You know who God is. You know who your daddy is. And you have no question about it. And you will just go after your daddy. The problem is we still have people who are questioning about their own father. I mean, our heavenly father. That's why it's so hard for them to pursue God. And, it's, and if you don't trust God, don't expect God to speak to you. God will not volunteer his voice to you. I have news which could be a bad news. God will not volunteer his, his, his voice to you. He will only speak to those people that are already longing. That's why in places like Muslim countries that are worshiping along God and, and God shows up because he knows they are looking for something. That's what the scripture says, seek and you'll find. Whoever is seeking, God will show up. God is so merciful when you are seeking, genuinely seeking God. You don't have to be perfect at seeking God. You don't have to be a professional at seeking God, but your heart must be positioned in that way that you need him with everything in you and he will show up. There was, there was a man called Ishmael, who is not even a promised child, but he was, she, Ishmael was crying out for water. The child was thirsty, crying out for water. An angel shows up and gives the child the water. When, you, when there is a longing inside you, when there is a crying inside you, God will meet your needs. God will visit you. God is so good, people. God is not like human beings that will disappoint you. God is constant with his love. God is so deep. And if you want to be God's beloved, be the love of his presence. People that love God's presence, they, they attract heaven. They attract favor. Things that are impossible to achieve it, you just achieve it. You don't even have to pursue miracles. Miracles will pursue you. You don't have to pursue blessings. Blessings will follow you. You don't even have to pursue certain things. They will just follow your life. Promotions will follow your life. Your finances will change. Some of you, you have been testifying. Well, I just had a testimony there that, that, that how the finances have changed. And many other testimonies. And many who have been healed. And many who have been set free. Let me tell you my secret. I don't seek any of those things. I seek God's presence. As I seek God's presence, all those things follow me. And those that I pray for, it follows them. Why? Because God, I'm seeking God to encounter them, that they may know you, Lord. They may experience your, your depths, your heart. If they can only your, know you, Lord. Let me tell you something. The more real the presence of Jesus is, the more cancer has become unreal, the more sickness has become unreal. All you need, you need more of the presence of God that anything that is, is giving trouble in your life will be nothing. Let the presence of God be more tangible than the problem you're going through. I told somebody who was going through problems and problems, I said, you magnify too much problems. Start magnifying God's presence. Start magnifying the name of God. You will see that all those problems will go away. He says, you don't understand. I said, I don't understand, but there's one secret I know. When God's presence shows up, it doesn't matter how big the circumstance is. It doesn't matter how huge the confusion is. God is able to come through. The word of God says, greater is he that greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. But sometimes you are blinded by problems, you're blinded by sickness, you're blinded by needs, you're blinded by this. But if you just focus on his presence, he becomes bigger than your needs, he becomes bigger than your situation, he becomes bigger than all that, and the presence of God becomes so big in your life. You know what happens? Greatness of God's. Power starts to flow through you. And the whole world looks so tiny. The entire world looks so tiny. And God looks so big. But when you focus on the problems of the world, the world looks so big. But greater is, in, is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. You know, let's go back to Exodus. And uh, 
Hallelujah. I know, I know people did not get the link properly, but it's recorded so you, they can watch later. And apologize, apologies for those that did not get the link. Um, verse 9, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 9 says, By faith he sojourned in the land of the promise as in a strange country, dwelling in the tabernacle with Isaac and Jacob, and the heirs of the same promise. You remember Isaac went into a known land and there was famine there, there was drought there. And when he planted in the drought, the Bible says in the same year, he had what? Harvest, you know why? There were so many people having fields and planting, they didn't have a harvest, why? Because he was a carrier of the presence of God. Whatever you plant in God's presence grows. Whatever you touch in God's presence, it becomes blessed. It turns into gold. You know, I was talking to one of the leaders of the country, told me about his, the country that was considered did not have gold, did not have minerals. I remember we went to that country, we picked up the soil and started declaring there will be gold, gold will be discovered, oil will be discovered, all kinds of minerals will be discovered. And that leader that I had a private meeting with, he told me that there's so many gold and so many minerals that have just started happening in the nation. Because you know what? When you, as a child of God, you step into a community or you step into a nation, you will change everything. You know the story of Asher in the Bible. Wherever his feet stepped was turned into oil. He went to, he went to Ailan, it's an oil country. He went to Ailak, it's an oil country. He, wherever he's, when you look at the Bible history, wherever he's put his feet on, there was oil. Eh. What about you when God anoints your feet? Whatever you put your feet on, there's oil. What about you when God anoints your hands, whatever you touch it into your hands becomes blessed. When you become part of the business, the business begins to flourish, begins to make profit. Whatever you touch begins to grow and expand. This is, this is, this is what makes a difference between the one that carries the light and the one that carries the darkness. When you are part of something, it will work. That's why as a child of God, do not just join any club anyhow, do not just join any company anyhow, because you are an asset. When you join something, if it's a failure, it will become a winner. If it's not working, it will become working because you bring in the working anointing. You bring in the working faith. You are the producer, not just a consumer. Why? Because you have angels that are being activated, working, working with me and working with you. They walk, work, walking with you and working with you. Every time you go into a place, you're not alone. And Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Means my presence will always be with you. My person of my presence will always be with you. If you have become conscious of God's presence that is always with you, you will fear nothing. You fear nothing. People, the secret for increase is God's presence. The secret of living a victorious life is the presence of God. Moses knew something. He knew there were, there, there, there were some, some tribes and, and he knew there were some people groups of people that may attack him. He didn't have a trained army. He was the only trained army and he, as he was taking the children of Israel. But he knew that if he, car, he, he went with God's presence, he was as good as an army. You may not be skilled in many ways, but when you are with God's presence, 
you become qualified to win even where you're supposed to lose. You may not be qualified in education and different things, but when, when God's presence qualifies you into favor, God's presence brings an expert to do stuff for you. I tell people, you don't have to know everything, you just have to bring the right people around you. And the Bible says, when man's walk, a woman's walk, praises the Lord, it gives you favor. It gives you favor with the people to work for you. It's a scripture. Are you lacking people? Seek God's presence, they'll come. Hallelujah. I'm really excited about that, that we take time like today to just teach. I, loved, I love breaking down the word of God. I just love God's word. Verse 10, for he looked for a city which he ha, have, have found foundations. You are welcome, Ty. Whose builder and the maker is God. Verse 11, through faith also Sarah herself received strength and conceived a seed and was delivered on the child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. People, when you walk with God, God will remember the name of God is faith. His name is faith. He's faithful, he will not deny himself. Anyone who's got faith will have results. Unless you have a wrong faith. But the true faith, true spirituality is believing in the resurrection and on the death of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is Lord and King. That's true spirituality. You meet so many people say, I'm spiritual. Yes, every human being is spiritual, but true spirituality is through Jesus Christ. Because that's where your security is. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about Jesus as the author of your faith. I'm a writer. I write things that never existed and I put them into existence, right? Those books that I have, they never existed before. And I never copied to anybody or tried to copy somebody's. No, I write them from my inside. They are original. In other words, I authored them from nothing to something. And today I give it to you in your hands and you read it and say, wow, and blesses you. Now, faith, he gives you faith as you hear his word. It gets written in your heart, in your spirit. The ability to believe the impossible the ability to believe in angels, the ability to believe in healings, in ability to believe in cure where there's no cure, that type of insane faith to believe things that do not exist, it's a miracle faith that is being written inside you, that you can do all things through Christ, that's faith. You can, you are an overcomer, that's faith. You are blessed, not cursed, that's faith. People, people laugh at you. When you say God has called you to become a billionaire, they will laugh at you. God has called you uh, to raise the dead. They will laugh at you. People will laugh at you and you say you can cure HIV and AIDS and diabetes and all this. They will laugh at you. But because there's something inside you, deeper than you, stronger than you, that's faith. That's from Jesus, it's not from the earth, it's from heaven, and heaven is living inside you. Something has been sub tattooed inside your heart, something has been subscribed inside your heart. The presence of Jesus, you feel God's presence, you believe in the reality of God's power, that if I lay my hand on you, you shall be healed. If I speak the word of God, when you receive it, you shall be healed. 
All things are possible with him that believe. With is the person. With is the person's presence. Are you with God's presence? It's not some sort of power. It's the presence of the person. I was in Dubai many years ago. I was taking a team from Africa to, to Germany. And they couldn't speak English, but they were very anointed people. God spoke to me and said, if you can take just anointed people, select anointed people, not because they speak English, but because they're anointed by the Lord. So I did something outside the box. I picked people who are very anointed. When these people prayed, the place shook. When these people prayed, you can feel the energy from heaven, the presence of God. I said, you are coming with me. You are coming with me. They were only qualified to go to, to fly with me by what they carried, not by, the, by education. And I said, what will happen if I can carry this type of people into Europe? I was doing experiment with God. So we were in uh, Dubai. They were asking them where to go because I'd gone to the restroom. Who knew where it was going? They seemed they didn't know where I was going. And they, they, they got arrested for no reason. And, and, we, and the plane was about to leave. Immediately, suddenly, I changed into a new man. I commanded those soldiers, those, those security officers. I said, I'll put you all in trouble. Let my people go. They did that. And then we went and passed. And everybody looked at me. Even me, I said, what did I just do? <laughs> this is a true story, by the way. And we arrived in Germany. Again, at the... At the entrance, they wanted to give trouble. I said the same thing, let them go. They said, okay, sir. Then we went. Ish, there were so many miracles. I never regretted that I went with them. They didn't speak English, but they found anybody limping. They laid hands and the person walked. That was the only communication. They found anybody who was sick. They prayed for them. They knew how to pray. The power of God was so present. I didn't know where to find enough food for them. Mm -hmm. Then in the morning at 7 a.m., God is my witness. There was a truck full with food mm -hmm. packed right there. We lined up and I said, who told you to come here? One who was a pastor said, God gave me a dream that I should go and get a truck full with sandwiches and food because there are some Africans who may need food. <laughs> then that, that pastor, we ended up becoming friends. I didn't even know who he is. It was high quality food. Every 7 a.m. he would bring the truck and it would open up and save us food. Every 7 a.m. This was in Frankfurt, true story. And now after the food, some of those Africans who could not speak English, they started speaking in, 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 in tongues and a German man was able to interpret from a heavenly tongues to a German language and I'm just watching, I said, we are living in the Bible days. <laughs> and I remember this friend of mine, he, he's, he's poking tongues, he went like, oh, hey, hey, I didn't understand it. And the German guy said, God is saying this and that and that. And I said, wow. And the presence of God was there. Marked by God's presence. By the way, there was a, a that's why you wonder why there was a crazy documentary about us. And mostly they targeted me. All, all these wonderful brothers who are atheists, they targeted me. They said, this is a good story. So they were following us throughout, throughout, uh, you have heard my story before, throughout the old German because of miracles. And one day I was, I was, I was walking in Frankfurt. I saw the newspaper on the floor and it was my my face and I'm like, Jesus, on the 
plant, but I didn't read German. Like every day we had a headline. Wherever we went, there was generous, we had a headline every day. I wish I corrected all those newspapers and kept them, but I didn't think about that. I was too heaven reminded. But again, I want to quote that. Some people say being heaven reminded, not being healthy good. That's not the truth. That statement the Holy Spirit told me is not true. The more heavenly you are, the more responsible you are. The more you are disconnected to heaven, the more you are disorganized on earth. So what we need is to, to set our mind on things above. Then we should be able to be successful here. If we are not successful there, there's confusion here. So be heavenly as much as you can. Then you'll be so much earthly good. But if you try to be too earthly good, you'll be no heavenly good. Then you are no heavenly good, you are confused. Seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the person. The kingdom means the king and the dome is the place. The king sits on that dome. Jesus, the person, the kingdom, the treasures of the kingdom, the gold, the silver, everything will follow you when you follow the person of the presence of the kingdom. We have a few minutes more. Then uh, uh, I invite John. We have like that's wonderful. I'm telling you, something beautiful is happening tonight. You are next online for God's presence. I couldn't even finish the teachings, but let me see if I can squeeze it in. Uh, because we need to finish by nine. I'll invite John to come and. Uh, there's something I want you to understand about the book of Hebrew. It's so powerful because we were talking about Moses. We were, let's jump. Put, We'll go to 22 and 23. Maybe next week we may continue something. And 24. It says, by faith, Joseph, when he died, he made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, and he gave commandment concerning his bonds. When you're a carrier of God's presence, your voice will never die. Because the nature will obey, the next generation will obey, everything will obey. That's the power of God's presence. And God is about legacy. Yes. Verse 22, by, verse 23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, he was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. When God's favor is upon your life. God will command people to look after you. When God's favor is upon your life, God will command people to usher you into your purpose, usher you into your destiny, usher you into your vision. They'll help you build. The favor of God was upon Moses, the Hebrew. God commanded the king's daughter to look after because Moses was a future for the Israel. You are the picture of Joseph and the picture of Isaac. Isaac was a physical example of the blessings of Abraham. When Isaac planted in the famine, he was able to harvest the same year, such that the kings were envious of his blessings. The kings of this earth will be envious of God's blessings over you. Amen? So, he was a physical picture of the manifestation of Abrahamic blessings. Today, you are a physical picture of the manifestation of the blessings of Jesus. We don't see Jesus here, but you are the manifestation. You are the true picture of Jesus on earth. I hope you got that. Now, you must understand that you'll be protected 
God will send people to protect you. God will send people to fight for you, to send people to build you, supply you with everything, just as God is sent the daughter's fellow's daughter to look after him, though he was his own. There are people who come in your life who look after your vision, though it's their own, who look after your dream, though it's their own. Why? Because God's favor has come upon your life until your vision grows, until you, that baby becomes stronger. God will take care of your dreams and your vision. They will never die. You may never have gotten a, 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 an acting role or a job or, or your company is not taking off. Don't worry, God will send his people that will usher you into your destiny. Just as he sent the people to look after Moses when he was young. Hallelujah. But you must understand in verse 24, by faith, when he was come to years, by faith, he was trained as a prince. He had abundance. A prince means a ruler and a, a ruler over leaders. So he understood loyalty and power. There's just power, but there's also loyalty and power. Loyalty means they own the land, they own the people. But he understood that power of loyalty. He understood it very well. But even if he was walking, in that power of fellow's shadow as a, his son, as his, as his prince, then he encountered something much more greater than that power, the presence of God. That's why Exodus chapter 33, verse 15 says, I will not go anywhere if the presence of God does not go with me. Some of you never understood what Moses said I hope you have a little bit of understanding why people, when you experience Jesus, I can't force you to read the Bible. I can't force you to fast or to pray. It will be a natural thing that you want to have in your life because you have experienced something. I don't preach because of anything. In fact, I started preaching before I went to Bible school. When Jesus visited me, naturally, I wanted everybody to know about my Savior, my Lord, my Jesus. That's why I went to places like India. I even went to places where I was almost killed by the machete. I shared that story to some of you. I don't want to mention the name of the religion. And my bodyguard, Patrick, the Python killer protected me. The Dutch, the Dutch guy from Netherlands, when I went to that village, I had a vision to see the entire village to come to know the Lord. So when we were communicating, he said, okay, but I'll send you someone to protect you. I said, I don't need any protection, but he still said his name was Patrick because witchcraft was coming down, powers of darkness was coming down people started experiencing another power that they've never seen. They have experienced witchcraft, they have experienced all this. But when I was in the area, they were experiencing the power of God and witchcraft was paralyzed and they couldn't function because the glory of God was in the area. And guess what? They wanted to stop me in the natural. They came with a machete. And I thought my life is over for sure. At once in my life, I thought about that. But at the same time, there was so much joy to lay my life to the one that I love. I experienced half matter before. <laughs> I wasn't really matter, but I experienced the joy of being with the Lord and the joy of being so scared in the natural. Then, 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 <laughs> then, then Patrick says, I am Patrick the Python killer. If you dare touch my client, I'll kill your chicken your animals and everything, and I'll burn your villages, the whole land. And then I heard about the story that this guy actually, he had a python attack him in the natural and he killed it with a very little knife. <laughs> so they call him Patrick the Python Killer. Because of that, you know, python is not a joke animal. 
So, so he, that's how he gained his reputation. And when he said that, I saw every single person said, we didn't know this is Patrick the Python killer. This is a, they started learning. Then I said, God sent Patrick as an angel. Praise God for Patrick, the Python killer. So God will send people to protect you. I didn't say it necessarily, but God foresaw it. He saw the future. So he sent Patrick, the Python killer, to protect. And from that, that very moment, Patrick became my closest friend. I said, I need to keep him very close. Everywhere I'm going, I say, Patrick, let's go. Before I didn't know, I was leaving him behind sometimes. You know, I was doing my own thing. He would even get upset. He said, sir, you, have, you can't go anywhere or pray for anybody without going with me. This area is dangerous. And I said, don't worry. But, but from that day now, I became an obedient child. And I said, Patrick, go with me. God is leading me this way. Patrick said, wherever God leads, I'll come and I'll protect you. You close your eyes, I'll open my eyes. <laughs> God bless Patrick, the Python killer. All right. Uh, let me invite John and then, uh, uh, then I'm going to come and close in prayer. I don't know how you follow that, Patrick, the Python killer. So uh, I think I want to find out how I can get him to be on my security team there in Malibu or something, man. I got to call Patrick the Python killer, so <laughs> I should have him come up and do the offering, man. Give. Well, hey, uh, he just, uh, Gershom asked me to come up and just uh, speak really quickly on, um, you know, on giving. And I, you know what? I, I'm i excited to, to talk about this. You know, sometimes it can be uncomfortable for people to talk about giving. And, you know, people, we've all sat in places where you feel oh, somebody's trying to manipulate me or you know, say whatever. But one thing I can say, um, and I really want to say this, is by me being in this man's ministry, just by what he says, learning how to cultivate the presence of God, it's given me a revelation of giving, of being generous, not just to his ministry, but to everyone. Uh, I try to be a good tipper. I try to take care, you know, I'm generous in public, wherever I go. And something I, I really has started to see the fruit of what it means to be under this man's ministry. And I want, I want to actually challenge you guys and you online and everyone here, if you feel like your life really has changed, if you have fruit from this man's ministry to give into this ministry, because I'm going to tell you right now, he told me several years ago, he said, John, your life's going to change. He goes, just, just stick it out. You're going to go through good, bad. There's going to be some. Let me tell you something. My wife will tell you. We've had bumps. We've had bruises. We've been kicked out of places. And let me tell you something. I would. My, so, and this is not a boast. I don't want to give like exact numbers, but my income has doubled, literally doubled. And I had a $50,000 raise in January that's never been done before in our industry. And I am now the highest paid team lead in the security industry in the state in all of our security industry in Southern California. It's never been done. And oh, by the way, the other guy that has my job up in Northern California, he got it too because of, of what happened with me. Thanks, Camille. So she, she prophesied over me on that too. It's, it's everyone community in here. And I wanted to share this with you guys because, you know, sometimes I said, I said, you know what? You should start letting some of us share some of these testimonies because, you know, you talk about a thousand times more and, and giving, but I'm telling you guys this stuff works we were I've literally seen God transform my life to where we were struggling and now I mean we got back to Oak Park where we are and things are turning around in our life personally professionally and I'm seeing God's hand move and then when I started really being faithful with my giving and tithing and you know what sometimes it, it can you're like oh you know what but I'm like no and I wanted to read this scripture because I take God for his word. I take God for his word. And that's something that Gershom has taught me. And it says right here in Luke 6, 38. And how many times have we read this? And how many times have we, we've said this, but do we really believe it? Do we really believe it? And I have to challenge myself this. It says, ready, give, and it will be given to you. It doesn't say give and it may be. 
Give and it might be. Give and if God's feeling good in a mood that day, it will be. No, it says give and it will be given to you. Ready? Good measure. Press down. We sing those songs. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. You know, silly. You know, it's so. And then, ha ha ha. We we sing that little song or whatever. But it says it right here. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over will be put into your lap. And here, then it says, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back. So I want to challenge you guys. And this isn't. I mean, hear my heart. This is not a. Any. There's. There's nothing coming from this, but trust God. And I'm telling you, when he, when I started getting in the presence of God, he started challenging me in my giving. When you're in the presence of God, like he talks about, you're, you're, I, I could be doing something, I just praise and worship God. He's like, yeah, you're going to give, you make sure you give that, you know, your tithe, make sure you, oh, and that offering too. I'm like, oh, wow, I heard you, God. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be obedient and give. And I'm telling you, when you start being consistent with your giving, stuff will literally come and chase you down. This job chased me down. It chased me down. And now they've asked me to move over into business development and do other things while I'm still managing. And I literally have people calling me and they're finding out who I am. And I was just telling Camila back there, I was like, man, I'm telling you, watch what one year even from now, what's gonna happen. A, I believe it's being plugged into this man's ministry because he's plugged into Jesus. Being, I believe it's being faithful to give. Amen. So I, is it okay if I share this with them or how to give? Or do you want to do that? Yeah, I think, yeah, sure. Okay. So if you are going to give today, that'd be great. Um, the PayPal is, for those of you online, is hispresencefire at gmail.com. Hispresencefire at gmail.com. The Venmo is hispresencefire. Cash app is dollar sign hispresencefire. And Zell is fire, 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 love at Gmail. Three fires. Fire, 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 love at gmail.com. <laughs> Did you want to pray? All right, wonderful people. Let me pray for you. We're almost time up. I know today is more teaching. Next week, it's going to be more. We're going to have the full worship here. Uh, but Sharanda, you can come and sing one song. Yeah, let's have Sharanda. Some of you may not know who Sharanda is. She, she's, she's in the TV show, The Stars, Star Wars. But she loves the Lord. It's not just acting, but she loves the Lord. Yeah. We, it's all hard to see more actors love the Lord. And uh, yeah, you can, you can come and stand right here and uh, people can see you in the camera okay so today we are a little bit just simple but mm -hmm. works we're doing a cappella today we there are sometimes we don't want to do music or anything we just want to talk um next week we're gonna have music and everything else so we i want you to know that god can move without instrument but also god can move with instrument jesus we love you oh how we love you you are the Feet of Jesus. 
That's wonderful. Um, anyway, so let me just pray for you. And you may be going through some. You are here. Just raise your hand to the Lord. You know, one time I was I was praying, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Said, "Raise up your hands." Then when I raised my hands, said, "Every time you raise up my hands, I come down. Every time you raise up my hands, I come. You come down." So let's do like what is. Father God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the people that have made it on Zoom. Congratulations to each one of them. And thank you for people that uh, made it on Facebook and those that are gonna watch us later on YouTube and other places. And Lord, I just pray for people that are present here. And Lord, I, I just rebuke the back pains to be healed. I rebuke even the confusion in the mind to go. I speak clarity in your mind in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the presence of Jesus. Lord, I pray that heal their bodies, revive their spirit, and heal their souls in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that I feel your presence. Let your presence fill their lives. And dear Lord, I pray that we will know you even deeper and deeper. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for, for your word. Help us, Lord, to be the healers of your word and the doers of your word. Lord, we thank you. Cause us to become one with your word. Let your word cause us to, to grow in you. Make our hearts so fertile so the seeds of the word can germinate and produce hundredfold, a thousandfold, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the spirit of favor. We thank you for the spirit of productivity. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, the visitation of God. I pray that you be visited by God. I pray that you be touched by God, comforted by God. I pray that the, the voice of God will be so real in your life that you hear this is the way and you follow it in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you are a faithful God. You are speaking God. You are doing God. You are a God of breakthrough. I declare a breakthrough anointing. What I mean by the anointing, let the oil of God oil you so that you may come out of every situation. I release a turnaround grace, the anointing of God, that things are going to shift and change in your life. And I release the anointing to move forward, the supernatural ability to move forward, a supernatural ability to be promoted, a supernatural ability to be innovative, creative, in the name of Jesus. And I release the healing power into your life, that you lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. You speak the word of God and the word of God will change life. I pray for supernatural impartation of the grace of the power of the Holy Spirit and I bless your finances as you give today as you give today I pray for Deuteronomy 1 verse 11 may the Lord God of our forefather multiply you a thousand times more than you are may the lord bless you the word bless means nothing missing nothing broken may the shalom of god be upon your life may good things happen to you may good opportunities happen to you may good relationships happen to you may good business come happen to you you know many people have success but there's good success there's excellent success may god give you good success in the name of jesus we thank you father that may you prosper in everything you do i just see god's grace is coming upon you just receive it right now 
just begin to thank God for what he has done. Lord, I thank you for touching my life. Thank you for touching their lives. Thank you for your presence. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Just make a whisper to him or just say something in your car, in your house, whatever you're doing here. Just don't be afraid to reach out to God and what you feel in your heart. Just reach out to God. God knows exactly what you're feeling. And if God is so nigh to you, God is so closer to you, closer than the air you breathe, closer than anything else. He wants to touch you right now. He wants to remove that heavy yoke. He wants to destroy that heavy burden. He wants to remove it by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You online, God bless you, and we'll see you on uh, next Thursday in person. Hallelujah. God bless you, and thank you for joining us. You online. God bless you here. Oh, I saw Dean. I just, I've just seen Dean. Good to see you, Dean. Uh, Dean and Susan, they just, we just became into partnership with uh, uh, Good Life television will tell you more about our partnership it i really feel god in it and i'm really excited we'll tell you more and we'll make some good announcement it's good to see you all australian friends Anna and many others god bless you all god bless you. thank you <laughs>